and it is just money. Mm. At least we have our health, and that's the main thing. And but if it happens again, <laughs> <laughs> then I won't be so kind. No, no. Well, on that point, are you still investing in cryptocurrency? I am, yes. Tell him. He didn't tell me that. Do I need to give it to a moment? No, no. It's it's nothing like I, I put my whole wages in. It's just but spare why, change. Why would you? What's spare change? We don't have spare change to be throwing around. So why would you even bother putting it? Like it's just stupid. It, Are you wallet... putting more money in there, like from your wages now? Hello darkness, my old friend I've come to talk with you again Alright guys, welcome back to Wolfpack Cryptos and MMG Invest This morning I'm going to do a quick uh, TA update It's going to be charts Mainly charts Alright guys, it's going to be quick as well Alright, so I'm still expecting a possible pullback on the markets here on the S&P, Dow, all the equities. The interesting thing is gold for some reason is rallying, which is it's signaling that uh that they're expecting a pullback in equities. So, I like to look at the Russell 2000 First of all, this is not financial advice. Consult your financial advisor. This is more of an educational channel on how to trade. Once this video is uploaded, it's pretty much obsolete. Do not invest in anything you're not willing to lose or lose sleep over. And uh, equities, cryptos, all of this is extremely volatile, extremely risky. Do not even trade if you don't know what you're doing. All right, um, here's Russell 2000. So... Let's go to a daily chart. Here's a daily chart. It looks just like the S&P and the Dow. Now we did have a cross, a negative cross to the downside with the MA cross on the daily for the Russell 2000. But um, the price seems to be holding up. It had that nice bounce yesterday for... Uh, Monday and Tuesday see this candle right here this is a nice bullish candle look at that wick that buying wick what is that uh, uh it looks like a hammer almost but it's not it's uh it's uh what you might call it I already forgot anyways um the oscillators they're neutral, slight bullish, I guess, because the RSI can reset. It's been oversold on the daily. So, I'm not exactly sure if this is going to sell off or it's going to continue to rally. Now, there's a lot of resistance above uh, 1500 here. And this is, remember, the Russell 2000 index. And uh, the Russell 2000, it's 2000 companies. They're smaller companies. You're not just looking at the S&P 500, the 500 largest companies. You're looking at uh, mid-sized businesses. And I think that's a better uh, indicator for the economy. We could also look at the QQ. We could look at other indexes, but... The Russell has been pretty good for me. A lot of people look at transports. I'm not going to look at that right now. Also, another reason why the price popped was the moving averages and because of, you know, Jerome Powell's 60 Minutes interview. I guess that could have helped push up the market a little bit. But he didn't say anything new or anything that people didn't expect. So I'm assuming that's already priced in. So the the heat map in the background is telling me there was a little more upside. But there is a lot of resistance 
at 1570 all the way to 1600 so we'll see if the price could break through it now if the price could get above uh, 1600 on the Russell 2000 here then uh, we're gonna start heading higher up towards the all-time highs which was up around 1750 and there is a big green Ishimoku cloud and if we start seeing a ramp with the cloud then it's definitely gonna shoot the price higher that's the daily chart though let's take a look at the three-day chart Now the three-day chart, I still see the 100-day moving average falling. And it could, uh, once it crosses the 200-day moving average, the price could fall back down. And that's just that. Uh, the heat map on the three-day is uh, still, I mean, after all this red, you're going to see some more downside. And the MACD on the three-day chart, you see the three-day charts more negative the one-day charts neutral slight bullish but the three-day chart is telling me there's more downside to come on the Russell 2000 TM squeeze is also still in the overbought territory so is the momentum indicator and the RSI still has a long way to go to become oversold so the three-day charts tell me there's possibly a few more weeks of downside Here's the weekly chart. We had a nice nine sell signal on the weekly. In, in the private group for MMG elite members, that's why I bought in uh, those inverse ETFs. Now, I'm going to probably buy them back if as soon as this little dead cat bounce or rally sells off again, if it does. So I'll, I'll buy those back. And they rallied. It's just that I wasn't paying attention. I didn't take profits on them. I just held them and we broke even. Or Well, I took small profits on the other ETF. Anyways, um, so after a nine sell signal on the TD indicator, you'll get one to four candle pullback or worse. On the weekly, the RSI is still in overbought territory. So is the momentum indicator. And uh, the MACD told me to get out as well. So on the weekly, I, I see more downside. And the weekly is more important than the daily. So the three-day and the weekly are negative. I guess we could look at the monthly. Why not? The monthly... I would say it's neutral slightly negative by looking at just the oscillators um, if this candle this week if we close this week by Friday 4 p.m. US Eastern Standard Time if we close the uh, this week's candle below 1500 then it's very negative then we're definitely gonna retest possibly 1370 on the on the Russell 2000 so the daily you know we might see another little upside today maybe tomorrow but I would not be surprised that it gets rejected at a 1570 when the price gets up there and then we see some more downside and once the price falls th through this green Ishimoku cloud, which is again 1500, and, and again at 1500 we have a moving average as well on the daily time frame, then we could see the price accelerate to the downside and take us all the way back to uh, anywhere from 1300 to 1400. Then we would see a nice bounce. There's also a little bit of support at. Uh, 
F1440, 1450. So um, I'm looking to buy back those inverse ETFs. Let's take a look at gold real quick. And this is for a swing trade. Nothing, guys, I don't like day trading. If I day trade, I'm not even going to post it in the elite members because most people, they can't keep up with. You should, you should start out, I, I believe, in my opinion, swing trading. Then you can start screwing around with uh, day trading. But honestly, swing trading, in my opinion, that's why I do it. Less stressful. It's more accurate. And um, your emotions are more in check. Um, here's the weekly chart on gold. Now, the MACD was going to cross to the downside on gold. On the weekly time frame. And... That's why I put my arrow down here at a 1270. But if the market sells off, then gold might stay above 1300 while the MACD crosses to the downside. Not just that, we can see these moving averages start curling up and once the 200 and uh, the 100-day moving average crossed my blue equilibrium line here, then we're going to see the price starting to shoot up on gold. And I've talked about how this... Well, it looks like crap. How this blue line hasn't crossed... Or how the 200-day moving average hasn't crossed above the blue line since uh, December of uh, 2002 and the last time it did that we went into this massive bull multi-year bull market up until the end of 2011 so it's a do or die situation all around because if the markets could sell off could start selling off again right and uh, this turned out to just be a giant bull trap then it's going to put gold into a massive bull cycle. And then uh, then the markets could um, start their uh, bear market or recession. Now, can the markets go higher and go past all-time highs? Technically, yes, if the Fed really starts up the printing presses again. You know, Venezuela... Its stock market did great in the first years of its hyperinflation. But that's in dollar terms and fiat terms. In real value, not so much, especially after taxes. I'll talk about that later. So right now, this week is extremely crucial. This, uh, this week, next week, this month, we're going it, to... It's really crucial to what's... To what we're looking at here if we're going to go into a bear market on equities and go into a bull market in uh, metals so a lot of people are starting to talk about the yield curve again and bonds the short-term uh, interest rate on uh, the yield on short-term debt like the monthly the three monthly and all that it's ticking higher than the five year or the three no nah, the three year and the five year so that's very um, interesting. Now, for the past the la the past seven um, recessions were predicted by the yield curve inverting, and um, you can see over here the one month is at a two point four percent interest rate. And uh, well, that's the spread. But uh, the yield curve is all the way down by this red line. You see that? So every time uh, the blue line, the yield, the interest rate, the yield curve uh, inverted and the short-term debt went above the long-term debt. So the interest rate on short-term debt, when it goes higher than the long-term debt, it does it creates an inverted yield curve and that's it, it never happens until prior to a recession 
and it's like predicted many recessions prior, right? The last seven, something like that. So, yeah, it says right here, predicted the last seven recessions. So you can see, you know, once it goes below the blue, the red line here, and we get an inverted yield curve, which is zero. That's what the red line is. Uh, we get a recession, and look how close we are to the red line. We're not below it just yet. So, and not just that, when it goes below the red line, below zero, and it inverts, we still have a few months of upside and maybe in the stock market, and then it finally starts, uh, we go into a recession. The, the gray areas right here are recessions, right? So, you know, uh, Black Monday, 1987 crash, uh dot com bubble right here mortgage backed security crisis 2007 2008 9 uh okay no actually that's right here <laughs> right here was um this was the dot com bubble and then we had a small one in the early 90s that's when japan uh imploded so you know we're coming up uh in 3 in 3 months we're going to have the longest expansion in US history as well so you know in the bond market the bonds have to go up and when bonds go up the blue line here which is the S&P 500 is going to go down i wish this kid uh we could see a longer historical chart i'll uh, i'll um I'll make another uh, historical chart that could show us decades, but you guys have to understand that since like since Paul Volcker in 1981, uh, bonds have been falling, right? Well, yields have been falling, and yields have to go back up, and so do bonds. Oh, here we go. Histor historical 10-year Treasury yield versus S&P 500. So here's the S&P the 500 is the black line. The blue line is the 10-year constant, the yield on the 10-year uh, Treasury bond, right? So as you can see here, the yield is going down, down, down. The S&P is going up, up, up. Actually, not so much. This is um, I you know I'm gonna go more in depth about that later. Gets a little complicated, and I have to, I have to say it in a way so some of you guys could understand. I don't want to use like jargon. Not just that. I'm kind of tired right now, and I'll I'll just uh, mess it up anyways. So um. Yeah, I'm. I, I guess I could go live now. They taken that away. Uh, I still have a strike, but I could go live for some reason. So I'm testing it out right now. I'll answer some of your questions now. So, uh, Robert Kraft's buying jet fans, massages. <laughs> I I haven't seen the mo the news. Oh, Jim Cooper. I thought your name was Jim Kramer. <laughs> oh, the opening bell was like ten minutes ago. And we're up a hundred points on the Dow. See, I I get carried away with these videos. I try to make fifteen minute videos. Before you know it, it's um thirty minutes. Alright guys, until next time.